Hey there and welcome back. Today we are diving into creating something really cool, a draggable and expandable vertical floating action button menu in Flutter. These floating action button menus are crucial for enhancing the beauty and interactivity of your app. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Alright, so let's kick things off by adding the floating menu panel package to our project dependency. Simply include it in your pubspec.yaml file, then either run pubget or tap on the download button to fetch this package. Next up, let's head over to the main.dart file. I have started off by passing a scaffold to the home parameter of the material app. Inside the scaffold, I have created a simple app bar with some sample text. In the body parameter of the scaffold, I utilize a stack because we want to our floating panel to overlay our main app content. Following that, you will need to create a list of icon data for the icons you want to display on the panel. For now, I have included a four different icon data from the iconly package. And right below that, we create an integer variable to keep track of which icon will be selected on the panel. We will display a specific icon from the icons list based on this variable. Then simply insert your main app content here, wrapped with a position that fill widget within the stack. For now, I've just placed a column with text, but feel free to add any widget you need based on your project requirements. And after employing the floating menu panel widget, which has a required parameter called onPressed, we need to pass our previously created icons list to the bottom parameter of this widget to see how it behaves on the screen, and just hot restart the app to see the result. Now, if you take a look, we have this floating panel that we can drag anywhere in the app, but when we tap an icon Icon, the main icon in the floating panel doesn't change. Let's fix this issue. Firstly, in the onPress parameter, we set a new state and assign a new value to the selected index variable within the function. For example, if we tap on the search icon, this variable will hold the index 2. Then in the panel icon parameter, we instruct it to show an icon from the icons list at the specific index that we declared when tapping on any item. This way, if we tap on any item from the floating panel icons, the main panel icon at the top will seamlessly change as well. Then, if you wish to change the color of the panel, simply set a new value to the background color parameter. For testing purposes, I've assigned it to Indiego and orange color to see how it works. Moreover, you can adjust the size of the panel by specifying a value for the size parameter, making it smaller or larger than the default size. Additionally, you have the flexibility to alter the panel shape. For instance, you can opt for rectangular or a stick with the default rounded borders. These are some of the key parameters that can greatly assist you in customizing this widget to find your preferred settings. However, alongside these parameters, there are several other you can explore to further enhance and personalize this floating panel. These include options such as the border color, duct type, duct offset, adjusting animation durations and their respective curves, radius, width, positions, and much more that wraps up today's tutorial if you find this helpful don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up stay tuned for more content and i'll catch you in the next one